Well, good afternoon. This is uh, Hound Dog Steve here, and it is uh, Sunday afternoon, May 21st, 2017. And I just want to make a quick little video here. I, I keep stumbling across these things. and uh, But first, humble apologies. I have just been extremely busy, which is why I haven't uploaded any videos lately. And um, so, anyway, I'm assuming that you have all survived rather well for the last week. Um, so this is a little story that I saw the other day about uh, inflation is tomorrow's problem. Okay, and there is a graph there showing uh, inflation for the last few years. And then down below is another graph showing uh, the different kinds of um, inflation results. So this information is extremely misleading and I really don't like the fact that it's appearing in a national newspaper and the reason is because inflation and GDP figures are so massaged as to be virtually entirely false okay so they use a system called hedonics in economics uh, it's an economic model and uh, well, yeah, let's take a little look for yourself. A hedonic econometric model is one where the independent variables are related to quality, e.g. the quality of a product that one might buy or the quality of a job one might take. A hedonic model of wages might correspond to the idea that there are compensating differentials and that workers would get higher wages for jobs that were more unpleasant. Okay, well, that's not the only thing. That they do with hedonics. One of the things they do in relationship to the economy, for example, is say that um, for GDP purposes, uh, they will say a phone cost $100 last year, and this year it costs $100. Now, there, that is no uh, increase in GDP on that particular item for the year. So what they might do is say, uh, oh yes, but you know, they have put a new style of touchpad on that phone. Okay, so we're gonna call that a value added extra uh, of $25 in value. So we're not gonna mark down that phone as selling this year for $100, we're gonna mark it down as selling for $125. And correspondingly, they do a similar thing when they are working out the inflationary figures. They have this thing called core inflation. So core inflation excludes food and energy from the calculation because these two items are deemed to be too volatile and so they muck up the result and so they just don't put them in. So let me give you an example of how that might work uh, in your life. Okay, so uh, you go, you have a lawn mowing business and you get yourself $25 for uh, mowing a lawn. However, one of the things that you do with your lawn mowing is you take out a whippersnip and you edge the lawns. And so you're gonna say, I'm gonna call that um, a value added extra, and I'm gonna add $5 to the cost of mowing the lawn. Even though I don't get an extra $5, I'm gonna call that a value added extra worth $5. So now on my in income side, I'm going to write in my books that I'm not making $25 per lawnmower, I'm making $30 per lawnmower. Okay, you see where this is going? And on the other side of things, uh, on my expenditures for my business, I'm not going to include my cost of lunches and uh, any other food that I purchase, and I'm not going to factor in any energy expenses because they're just far too volatile. And so when you mix that to concoction together, uh, you have an increased income and a de decreased expense situation. Now this is a completely false reading as to what is actually happening in your business because as far as you'll be seeing, you are really well off. You're doing absolutely fantastic, man. You're, you're making money hand over fist. So you decide to make um, economic decisions based on that. So you say, okay, I'm going to get three more lawnmowers because I'm making so much extra money now. I can afford to do that and hire three more guys to mow lawns for me. 
but this is going to be an absolute disaster because you are not counting your ins and outs correctly. So why is this important? Why is this a dangerous lie? It's because when people, uh, young people who are thinking about buying a house or uh, that kind of stuff, when they're doing cal their calculations and they're trying to factor in the inflationary factor, uh, the 1.2% inflation here is completely inaccurate. And uh, if you go down to shadowstats.com, uh, which I will leave the link for uh, in the show more box down below, uh, you'll see that inflation is running somewhere between 6 and 9% because uh, food and energy, even though the cost of a barrel of oil is way, way down to $50 a barrel, uh, gasoline and diesel has not come down correspondingly. Okay, and because of some of the food shocks that have happened, weather-related food shocks that have happened, uh, food is going up like crazy. And so um, when you're basing your decisions, not in the real world, you are looking for a real disaster to happen. And so I call these dangerous lies. Well, I thank you very much. This is Hound Dog Steve signing off. And please uh, like and subscribe down below. Uh, leave your comments and uh, let's start a conversation. It's an important conversation about your money and what you have to pay to live. So you have yourself a great day now.